Richard, the fine-tuning of the universe is a problem that many physicists say is completely solved by the notion of multiple universes, such that if you have an innumerable number of universes with different laws of physics in each one, selected entirely randomly, that within that constellation of universes, one or more will support life and the fact that we are in that universe, it's no surprise that we are here to ask the question because if we were in a universe that couldn't support life, we wouldn't be there to, to ask the question. And so the fine-tuning problem disappears. Uh, yes, the first thing I'd like to say is I'm not strongly convinced by the uh, physical arguments uh, for there being a, a multiverse, large numbers of universes of this kind. Uh, they do all seem to depend, or there are variants of, uh, ki of kinds of theories which have the consequence that there are many different kinds of universe. But the most popular one, as I understand it, is, is the uh, eternal inflation theory, that is to say that there is a vacuum state, energy state which is eternally inflating, but it, it sometimes condenses and uh, throws up a universe. And uh, the universes it throws up may be uh, all governed by the same laws but have different initial conditions, or they may be governed by laws in which there are different constants. Now, that might be true, but it seems to me that to postulate that is to postulate an awful lot. The only variant which is likely to succeed is to postulate an eternal inflation because otherwise there are great problems about how it would have started. And therefore that means postulating an infinite space in which it happened. And well, that could be the case. But uh, it's uh, postulating an awful lot in order to explain a little. Whereas simply supposing that it started from a big bang is only postulating one uh, initial uh, state at some distance from ourselves at some time with ourselves with certain characteristics. And it's a basic principle of scientific explanation that you shouldn't postulate too much in order to explain too little unless you need to. And uh, it seems to me this is postulating an awful lot in order to explain a little. But let, let's... Let's go along with it. Let, let's suppose uh, uh, multiverse theory is right. Now, one must distinguish between different kinds of multiverse theory. I did mention there are theories which uh, say that other universes uh, produced by such a process uh, have uh, the same laws of nature exactly as ours, but start from different initial conditions. That's to say the Big Bang, which made them might be bigger, a bit bigger or a bit smaller than the one which made ours and so on. Uh, and then there are theories which say that this whole process would have produced laws of the same kind of ours, but ones in which the constants are different. So the gravitational constant might be a bit bigger or a bit smaller. And um, if all that happens, then it's not too surprising that something would throw up um, uh, the whole process would throw up a law with the constants and the initial conditions of ours and therefore to the evolution of humans. Okay, but um, that's, we're only justified in postulating uh, other universes if the simplest explanation of our universe uh, has the consequence that there are other universes. And um, as I was just saying a minute or two ago, uh, we need a, a big theory, as it were, to explain uh, why at different points in space and time different, the uh, different universes are thrown up. Um, but uh, we mustn't postulate universes which wouldn't be thrown up by that sort of process. And um, uh, the process which, uh, of eternal inflation it does have certain special characteristics. It's a process governed by quantum theory, governed by relativity theory, governed by the Pauli principle, and no doubt certain other rather general principles which lead to the particular consequences of the split between the four forces. So it's not just any multiverse. It's a particular sort of multiverse. 
And there are an infinite number of possible multiverses which don't have the characteristic of throwing up at any time, any place, a universe like ours. It's only certain sorts of multiverse which have the characteristic of throwing up a universe which has the characteristic of being fine-tuned. So it needs a fine-tuned multiverse. Fine-tuned in the sense not that the constants uh, of our laws have to be fine-tuned, but that the laws have to be a particular kind of law. And the overall law has to be of such a kind as to throw up our sort of universes. So it too, in an important sense, has to be fine-tuned. The argument being that for a multiverse, yes, there has to be some so-called meta-laws of physics, but they do not have to be as fine-tuned because the generation of, of those universes can be very, very broad, such that any numbers of forces or any lack of numbers of forces or initial conditions or constants, everything altogether in this infinite number. And one then uses the concept of infinity to basically say you can get everything that you want. You do indeed need some uh, initial meta laws, no question about it. But whether those have to be as fine-tuned as what we claim for this universe is, is, is denied. Yes, that may be the case. But going back to my earlier point, uh, uh, they have to postulate a lot more in the sense of a lot more stuff, an infinite number of amount of stuff, uh, uh, an infinite amount of time for it to operate in. So in that sense, it's going to be a bit more complicated. And uh, the more complicated the law has, the law and the initial setup has to be, a priori, the less likely it is to occur. And therefore, I think there's a, there's a trade-off here. There's a trade-off. You have to postulate a certain kind of complex multiverse, which I agree, if that is the case, then it's quite likely that you would get a universe like ours. Okay, but uh, it has to have this sort of complexity, which makes it, well, possibly a little more likely a priori than that the constant should have our values, but I don't think very much so, and so I don't think it affects the general form of the argument. Furthermore, there is the point that um, this is meant as an argument against the existence of God, because it is said that the only way we could explain a fine-tuned universe would be in terms of God having brought it about in order to bring us about by means of it. Uh, but uh, if, if there, there were all these other universes, then that would suggest that this was a process that didn't need God. Uh, well, for the reason given, I think it's a very particular sort of process, and we should look for an explanation of it if we can find it. It seems to me that God would have abundant unit reason for bringing about a multiverse, because um, God can't bring about the best of all possible universes, because there isn't one. Uh, if we're a good thing, then a lot of us are a good, even better thing. And if we're a good thing on one planet, then another planet with being somewhat like us, somewhat different from us, perhaps would also be a good thing. So there might well be inhabited planets elsewhere in our universe. But um, uh, if this sort of thing's a good thing, well, why not a bit more of it? And therefore, why not a few other universes which, which uh, throw up, uh, uh, throw up uh, human-like beings? And after all, um, we are not the only good thing there is. Uh, animals are good things. An inanimate world is a good thing. Uh, this world would be marvelous even if it hadn't thrown up uh, human beings. You just have to look at the night sky. It's a marvelous dance. Um, creation itself of, of any universe is a good thing. God has reason for bringing about all sorts of universes. But uh, we're a particular sort of good thing because we have, uh, unlike inanimate things, the ability to choose between good and evil, and that is a remarkable characteristic. Um, so he's certainly got reason to produce a universe which produces somewhere beings like us, but he's got the same sort of reason to produce a multiverse that produces a universe somewhere like us, as well as lots of other universes. So it does need explanation that we have a multiverse of a sort that somewhere will produce beings like us. Um, and innumerable multiverses uh, with different sorts of laws would not do that, innumerable ones. Just let me suggest one, a universe which has only a law of gravity but no other law. 
uh, it would never produce us. All the matter would collapse together. There couldn't be human bodies. Innumerable things. It has to be, the laws have to be of a rather particular kind to produce human bodies. They have to have attractive forces. They have to have repulsive forces, because if you don't have both kind of such forces, you can't have uh, stable things. Uh, the uh, attractive and reform repulsive forces have to be of certain kinds and so on and so forth and for there to be laws which produce these sort of forces they too would have to be of certain kinds. So the multiverse um, might be a little simpler kind of physics than that of a soul universe or it might not. It seems to me very unobvious. But in view of the innumerable possibilities for other sorts of universes, if we can have an explanation of why the laws are like that, then we should look for it. An explanation in terms of an agent god who seeks to bring about many good things, including the good thing of us, with the choice between good and evil, would have to bring about a certain sort of multiverse. And that's why I think that the multiverse does not count against the existence of God.